So yeah, I'm Carolyn. I'm a front-end developer here in Berlin, and I'm here to talk to you about self-care in tech and how to build your own self-care toolkit. So first, what is self-care? The definition I use is that it is a self-initiated deliberate act to establish and maintain physical, mental, and emotional health. And that word, deliberate, that's what's really important because it, could, it should be an action that you choose to make. So what is self-care not? It's not selfish. It's not some sort of obscure luxury item. And it's not necessarily bath bombs and face masks, unless you want it to be. So why am I here talking to you about this today? Well, lack of self-care is a problem in the tech industry. We're just not getting enough of it. And because we're in Berlin, I think it's important to mention that startups are especially bad about this. And the reason is, is that we are allowing the culture we're creating um, to make exhaustion a badge of honor. And we promote this unrealistic expectations and loyalty to products. And oftentimes we're neglecting our body, hearts, and minds most basic needs. And it's ironic really, because we praise productivity and self-care can facilitate exactly that. There are a lot of proven outcomes to self-care, including burnout prevention and recovery, increased productivity, like I mentioned, positive working atmosphere, better emotional and physical health, and so many more. So how does someone arm themselves with self-care? This question can be a bit tricky because you actually define what self-care means to you, and it can look different for everyone. But I have some steps to at least hopefully get you going. So step one, identify your needs. Easier said than done, but there are some tools that can help you. So Allo and You Feel Like Shit are both um, online check-in tools that ask you a series of looping questions so that you can establish and track what areas of self-care you should focus on. And it asks you everything from practical questions to have you brushed your teeth today to something a bit more self-reflective, like who is someone that makes you happy? Or if you don't want to remember to check in with yourself, you can hire a Twitter bot to do it. So there are a number of Twitter bots um, that are focused around different self-care topics. And what is a good thing to do is if you find one that you like, you can turn on your notifications and then you get a friendly reminder each time they post. And you have to find the one that's right for you because each bot has their own personality. So for example, tiny care bot is much more loving and nurturing versus do things bot literally shouts at you in all caps. <laughs> So step two, now that you have figured out what your needs are, find resources to, you know, support those. The resource that I can recommend to anyone working in the tech industry is selfcare.tech. It is by a wonderful human named Jennifer Parsons, and it's basically just a big collection of self-care resources. It has everything from wrist exercises you can do at your desk to meditation apps, and it's all sorted by category. And it's a repo. So if you have a self-care you know, tool that you really enjoy, you can create a pull request. All right, and finally, you should make it a habit or at least try your best to. And one way you can do that is to challenge yourself. So 100 Days of Healthing um, mimics the idea of 100 Days of Coding, where you spend an hour every day on your physical, mental, or emotional health. And because again, it is on GitHub, you can share what you've learned and le like kind of take back other people's experiences as well. But you should remember to be kind to yourself because practicing self-care is actually really hard and some days will be a lot better than others and that's completely okay. So in the spirit of Enthusiasticon and being excited about all of this, I wanna share with you some of my personal tools, tricks, tips, whatever that I really enjoy and I'm excited about. So first, I do like face masks a lot. <laughs> I care about my skin. And I especially love them if they turn you into a cute animal. It's great. I actually use the ones from DM, which are not nearly as elaborate, but these ones are from SNP Cosmetics and are available on Amazon, equally as great. And next, working from home on therapy days. So mental illness runs in my family, so I've been going to therapy forever. But in, while most of the time I leave feeling like really energized, 
there are some days that, you know, touch on some rough parts and can be a little bit more difficult to deal with. And so working from home not only gives me flexibility as far as scheduling appointments, but if I do have a rough day, I can at least deal with that in my own space and not necessarily have to navigate an office atmosphere. And I threw up talk space as well because, you know, I haven't really found exactly a therapist that I'm like, you know, really connected with here in Berlin. So having online um, services such as Talkspace are invaluable to me because it's available anytime and everywhere. One line a day journaling. So when people get into self-care, you typically think of meditation, eating well, and journaling. So journaling never really stuck with me, but doing one line a day every day really helped because you do it for five years and it's cool because you can see your progress throughout that, you know, what you were doing the last year. So for example, around this time last year, I was a nervous wreck. I was about to start a coding boot camp. I was really nervous. I didn't know really know what to do. And now I'm working as a front end engineer. So it's cool to see that kind of progress. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> and on the topic of being really serious at work, um, my other thing, <laughs> taking my job really seriously is taking selfies while in the bathroom at work. And this is just a good opportunity to kind of take a moment for myself and it really helps boost my confidence, even if I don't send them to anyone. And I mean, our lighting is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Allo, as I mentioned earlier, um, is also an iOS app. It's coming out soon. I think it's supposed to be next month or the month after. And it's, I've been beta testing it and it's really great because you create this simple dashboard that's kind of a mix of self-reflection and practical you know, activities. And you can set the alerts to something that works for you. Programming your hands. So your hands are your most valuable tool as a developer in theory. And <laughs> not for everyone, but you know, there's a lot of exercises. This is a post from Coding Horrors, and it shows you a lot of different exercises you can do with your wrists, with your arms, your whole upper body, your posture. And I've been trying a couple of them at work, and I don't know, they seem to work. A long shower. It's so simple, but it works so well. So I learned the other day, actually, that cold showers help with stress and anxiety versus warmer ones help to relax our muscles. So now, depending on what kind of day I have, I will treat myself to such a shower. Eating alone at work. This one is something I'm very excited about because I'm actually naturally introverted. I like have a lot of social anxiety. So sometimes talking to people can feel just as exhausting as working. And I really like to take my lunch breaks to unwind. And, but I was feeling really bad about it because I'm new at my job and I feel like I should be talking to my coworkers. So I put this poll out on Twitter, but it seems like I got a lot of really lovely responses. And I don't know, I think if you need that time, you should take it. Turning off badge alerts. Um, so push notifications don't phase me because I can just swipe them away. But these never seem to go away and actually really annoy me. So I just turn them off, less stress. And finally, burnout prevention. So I'm pretty early in my career, so I haven't, like, thankfully, I haven't experienced burnout. But that relationship I have with my work, I know is really important to prevent that. So there is this website, burnout.io, and it reads like software documentation, but in a good way, I promise, um, where they kind of have these actionable items and really describe the issues in full. All right, so now that I've given you, you know, maybe some steps to take and some examples of at least how I deal with the world, um, I want to just leave you with one last thing before I get off the stage. What have I done today that feels nourishing, supportive, and inspiring for my well-being? And I would encourage you to ask yourself this every day, and just remember, you're probably doing great. Thank you. Thank you.